it goes back to a uh, course I taught on general relativity. I never had general relativity at university, and uh, I learned it not by listening to a course, but by lecturing one. So this was a bit of an adventure. Uh, it had the advantage that, that I learned it very well, and uh, it really forced me to understand it because I needed to explain it. So I was in that course, I was maybe four or five weeks ahead of the students, and uh, and I had to be able to explain this consistently. So this was this was the adventure, and it made me fall in love with the subject. And I was looking for connections between general relativity and optics, so and realized that they are all around you. So that uh, general relativity is not something that just belongs to the heavens and to the uh, astrophysics that is far away from us, but it's actually all around you. And uh, it's around you because optical materials like a piece of glass, uh, also they act as if they would curve space. The central feature of general relativity is that space-time is, uh, is curved and that uh, results in gravitation. And uh, But other things like simple optical materials, pieces of glass, water, air, can do almost the same thing. And that, that was the connection that, that brought me into this field. And that led then to various types of applications of this idea. So one is how to make black holes in the laboratory. So the most extreme objects you have in, in gravitation, can you mimic them with optical means? And yes, you can. The other thing is, can you use ideas that come from generativity for very unusual effects? And uh, the most interesting one is to make things invisible. So invisibility is directly inspired by ideas that come from coordinate transformations, uh, from the coordinate invariance of, of generativity. And uh, so that was the inspiration behind uh, invisibility. And then things went on. Recently, we're exploring the physics of the, of the quantum vacuum, and we tried to make also connections between the world of optics, the world we know from the laboratory, and the unknown world of astrophysics. And that's this is where this, this research is, is going to. Invisibility is perhaps the most visual part of it, if that's not an oxymoron. So, uh, because it if it can, if it could be achieved, then it would be the most striking one. There are, of course, a lot of practical problems in the way, but at least from the theoretical sides, it has become clear what would what one needs to uh, to do to make that that happen. Another aspect of this type of research is that it's it's very visual. So what I do is so I take concepts that have a geometrical meaning, and that means that they are by definition visual and and take them into physics. And so therefore, these ideas are relatively easily explained using pictures. And that naturally led to cartoons. So I also often, in scientific talks, I, I use actually cartoons. I also like to, to draw and express physical ideas in terms of, of uh, simple drawings. And so that is a natural connection uh, between cartoons and, uh, and physics. And so that led to me being very much interested in the project funded by ESC on cartoons that illustrate and popularize uh, physical research at the at the cutting edge. Pictures pictures are useful in in research and on various levels. So one is that uh, people often think visually, and, and I certainly do. So then it's helpful to express an idea in a in a picture. So if I haven't if I wasn't able to, to do that, then um, I, it's a clear sign that I have understood it. And the other aspect is to use pictures to explain things to others. So especially if you don't have much time to explain. So if you want to uh, make an idea that maybe took a long time to develop, if you want to make that understandable to people you meet, this could be other scientists or people from the public, then it's often helpful to, to use pictures. So pictures, uh, a picture says more than a thousand words. So to communicate, uh, pictures are very effective. And cartoons, then they add the fun side of this. So they make pictures uh, not just 
graphs, but they make them fun and lively and connect them with things that uh, people know from, from their experience. And that is a very nice way of explaining science in a form that people can easily understand and digest.